going on guys? Welcome back to Pure Evil on the Mac. I'm your host, as always, Evil Eddie, and it's been a long day. And first off, it's Ash Wednesday, so shout out to everybody there that's rocking, you know, a little cross on their head. A lot of people are walking around the city. You might think it's a, a face tattoo or they're fresh out of jail, but they're not. So let's pull in our guest here. We got, <laughs> we got Ashley Lauren Rollo joining us. Is that your official name or is that like... Yeah. I was, I was born Ashley Lauren, so I just started using it recently, like, with my whole full name, because, like, Ashley Rollo, there's, like, 8 million of them out there, so I just started using my middle name, well, my I guess it's my first name, just two of them combined. Yeah, like, I'm um, Edward Pasquale Valeco, and on Instagram, I was using that for, for so long, just to kind of add, like, a little extra flavor of, like, who I am. So uh, now that everybody knows who you are, they're seeing you here on the video capture device. They see the cross on your head, and I know that you just got off the train. Did you feel a little weird having that on your head? Are you used to that yet? Um. Well, I actually got it before I went into work today. And then uh, when I got to work, everybody at work was like, what are you doing? Like, what's that on your head? And then I posted a picture of me on it, and I got, like, hundreds of people messaging me, like, oh, my God, did you get hit in the head? Like, what happened? And I'm like, it's Ash Wednesday. And then they're like, what the fuck is that? And I was like, oh, it's just a, it's a religious thing. But, like, on the train at that point, like, people were just like, all right, somebody just needs to take a shower kind of a deal. Like, people, like, thought, like, it was, like, dirt or something. So I was like, whatever. Like, I, I was talking to my mom before, and she's literally at home, like, in, in the living room. It's still on her forehead. I was like, are you going to wash that off? Like, you going to keep that on all night? So, uh, like, one thing, before we jump into anything uh, further here, one thing that people need to know is, like, you can't eat meat. And, like, I was so close to, I, I forgot. And I almost started up the George Foreman Grill and cooked up a cheeseburger yeah. today. I was like, oh, my God. Like, it's, oh, uh... <laughs> Yeah, and I, I told you right before this, like, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm in the studio watching Sports Center, and people need to know this, you actually work at ESPN, right? Yeah, I work for ESPN, and I work for Amazon, so I work for two companies that I don't know if you guys have heard of, but yeah, I get to work for the big two. So I actually so, went uh, to broadcasting school, and you know, you're from cool. New Jersey, I'm from Connecticut, yeah. really not that far of a way. Uh, no, far no, away no. from one another and you know ESPN's right here in Connecticut how did you get that job like what's your background how did you land actually, that? actually it's their studio now is in New York oh wow um yeah it's it was crazy I got into television on accident um because I'm pretty technologically inclined and then like one thing like led to another I got like picked up by this company and then like ESPN liked me and it just kind of snowballed and then uh, they knew that I was technologically inclined, but then they also realized that I kind of know a little bit about MMA. And since ESPN's getting into MMA, they were some people were asking me questions, and I was giving them some information. And then they saw that I sometimes pick fights and stuff like that. And then they were like, oh, wow, you're pretty accurate, you know, because I don't go by the numbers. I don't even, like, look up, like, who's the favorite. I go by, like, who does their weight cut and all this other stuff. And they were kind of impressed like that. So then, uh, you know, one thing led to another, and, uh, you know, here I am. So you let's know, talk about that. Bit of everything. This is a huge year for MMA fans, UFC fans around the world. Even PFL just got signed to ESPN, which is amazing because I was there on New Year's and I, I was wondering, like, how, how is this going to evolve? And, you know, ESPN just signing the UFC is amazing for MMA fans a, a, across the planet because, you know, I've, I, I've been watching – uh, UFC for a long time, back from, you know, the blockbuster days with my father yeah. when I ran out of WWE. And it, it got to the point where they left Spike, they went over to Fox, and they, they hit it on Channel 271. So it was like, all right, it, it kind of like, you know, stayed, uh, you know, a little stale for a little while until Conor McGregor. Well, now ESPN signing on, the last event, UFC 235, doubled in views just on the prelim, so let's before we talk about that. What's your background in mixed martial arts? You say that you know you, you make picks, you do all that. You're in oh, jujitsu, right? I actually train. Yeah, I'm actually a fighter. Uh, I train Brazilian jujitsu uh, from the Henzo Gracie lineage. I train locally at Dante Rivera's, but I also train up at Henzo's in New York City. Um, I just really started dabbling like heavily into Muay Thai. 
Um, you know, uh, I've been doing it off and on since 2010. Originally started started at a school called uh, Tom Dragon, which is a Gracie Baja affiliate. And uh, yeah, I, I started doing that, and like it's just something that I always been passionate about because I feel like it really tests a person's just mental uh, acuity, you know, to to do a martial art, let alone multiple. And um, yeah, I fell in love, you know. So, I always say this: like you learn more in mixed martial arts class than you would in you know a year of school, at, you know, at a a community school or something like that. Like you learn more yeah. about yourself in life, right? Oh, 100%. Because, you know, you keep yourself in shape. You know what I mean? You're, you're around like-minded individuals. Um, you learn things, and you're not just learning them while you're in the school. You're also learning them while you go home because you're, like, watching tape. Like, I watch D- John Danaher videos. Like, I could see him every day my entire life but still always learn something. You know, and, and that's something that you, you, you're testing. And in school, you'll, like, study for, you know, a couple of weeks, and you'll take a test. Every day you step on that map, it's a test. It's what did I remember from last week? What did I remember from a year ago? And you're always building on it. And I always find that I learned a lot about myself. Like, I, I'm remembering certain things. I'm getting stronger. Um, you know, when you're cutting weight, you are definitely more disciplined. Uh, it's it's a tough mind game I would say you know a lot of the times like people are like oh you know like you're just beating people up or you're just choking people up it's it's way more than that it, it's literally you against yourself you know because you can have you can be in the same class and take the exact same classes as everybody else every day but the person who's got the mental strength will always succeed more than the person who's not necessarily there like mentally 100% you know no. so now, Ashley, obviously the last five, six, seven years, we've seen women's martial arts blow up like crazy. I mean, Ronda Rousey broke down so many walls. And you know, yeah. even Invicta FC, I mean, when did you find you know find your love for jiu-jitsu or, or martial arts? Um, I started, like I said, in 2010. And uh, it wasn't because I saw, like, Ronda Rousey or any of these other women. It, it was more like uh, I was in a situation, I was like, I don't like the way I felt there. I wish there was something I knew how to do. And then just through research, like, I found jujitsu. And, um, you know, when you start training and going to these classes, and they were like, oh, yeah, there's the UFC cards on. I'm like, what the hell? What is that? Like, you know, what is this? What is that? And then you just start asking questions, and then you, like, or hanging out with your teammates and then they go out to watch the fights and you're just you get hooked and you're just like then you have a favorite fighter then you know what i mean you're following their careers and their lives and it, it's just it turns into this whole like rabbit hole it's an obsession know? like and, and it is it really is an obsession like i'm flying out to california to do some work this upcoming weekend but i'm also going to be training with the lovely cat zingano um down in san diego and on you know, saturday so i'm like super excited about that because she is just a goddess like great person like super just she's just like a down-to-earth good person and uh, she just happens to know how to beat people up so she has an amazing <laughs> like, story too like this is not she, the first time you've met her either right no no i uh, i've had the pleasure of meeting kat a few times and i got to go to vegas i mean la uh, <laughs> back in december um <laughs> For her fight at 232, hashtag thanks, John. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I met her before that. Um, I met her when I was in Vegas for 229. Um, Ashley, can we talk about know, that really quick? Can we can we pause right there, rewind? Because for a lot of diehards out there, they know exactly what you're talking about. So, you know, you're here on the East Coast. You buy a ticket to go over there to Vegas originally. Then yeah. it gets uprooted for John Jones because of the failed test. Yeah. What was that yeah. like? Like, how did you find that out? And what was going through your mind when you found that out? Um, so, I bought, I'm one of those people, like, I just booked my flight to L.A. yesterday, um, even though I'm leaving Friday. So, I was like, all right, whatever. I'm going to book my flight, whatever. It'll be a good time. I booked my hotel in Vegas. I had dinner reservations. And then I see that he fails. And I'm like, oh, man, that sucks. I wonder who they're going to put on the main card. And then one of my friends, uh, he does weight cutting. Um, he's a weight cutting specialist for a lot of the UFC fighters. I'm not going to name drop him, but he goes, bro, you're not going to even guess what happened. I'm like, what? He's like, they're moving. I was like, who's moving? 
what are you talking about? He's like, they're moving the card. I was like, they're changing the date? He's like, no, they're physically relocating it. I was like, what do you mean they're physically relocating it? He goes, Ashley, I know it's Sunday. They're fighting in L.A. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, dude, that's less than a week from now. Like, how are they going to do this? They have to get all new medicals because I don't know, like, how many people are familiar. You have to get a medical to fight. But the medicals aren't good for the entire country. It's by a state-by-state basis. So now I'm like, these people are mid-cut. At the end of their cuts, like, what are they supposed to do? Well, they had to go to L.A. and get medicals done in California, and it turned into this whole big thing. And I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> like, I had everything booked. I was supposed to go to Andiamo and have a great steak. It's going to be fantastic because I knew I was having a fight coming up, so I wasn't going to be able to eat as much as I'd want in the future. And I was so mad. Like, I had the opportunity to meet John Jones a few weeks prior. And up until me meeting him in person, I didn't like him. And I told him that. I'm like, look, I didn't like you until I just met you now. Like, you were a nice person. And then that happened in uh, for L.A. And I messaged his team. I was like, look, guys, you know, shit happened. Was I happy about it? No. Did it suck? Yes. Was I out of a bunch of money? Yes. That being said, the, the MMA community as a whole kind of came together. And, like, we all, like, laughed about it. Like, I was in the lobby of the Hilton where everyone was staying because all the fighters stayed at the same hotel. And, you know, you see Gustafson, like, just chilling there, and he's just, like, shaking his head, and he's like, oh, man, I was supposed to be in Vegas. And we had a cool party for Kat and Chad Mendes because they have the same sponsor, um, All Tech Gates. And uh, they booked, I was really excited for this, they booked a golf thing at um, Pro Golf. I think that's what it was called, you know, where you go and yeah, it's like they, a, they show a it on bar. Ultimate Fighter all the time. Like you're up in the air and there's like all yeah. these different. Pl- yeah, we we know. What you're yeah, we about. had we had Buffer come in there to chill with us. Like we had Vegas like booked to a T. And the last time I was in Vegas was for a UFC fight. Like I said, two twenty nine, and Dylan Dan has messed that whole thing up. And I'm like, it's like I'm not meant to go see fights in Vegas or something. And, uh, you know, like, we didn't have a post-fight party book. It was, like, running around, like, last minute. Like, Chad and Kat had to, you know, worry about getting there because they had to actually fly to Vegas, do their pressers there, and then fly to California. And everybody was like, this is bullshit. Like, this is absolutely, like, why are we doing this? So when you get on an airplane, it helps. Uh, it doesn't help your weight cut. Like, no. you, sometimes most people put on weight. Like, I, I know if I flew to my fight in Atlanta, I'd put on two pounds. You know, I know that that's going to happen. And, um, you know, it was just like, it was chaos, but we all came together. We all, like, laughed about it. Everybody got, like, drunk in the lobby uh, the night before the fight. And then, like, the day of, like, we're all, everybody's just, like, drunk, like, in, in there. And it was just, you know, like, you can't help but laugh. Like, they rerouted, like, uprooted, like, an entire card <laughs> and their families. And my teammate, uh, Corey Anderson, was actually fighting on that card, too. And his wife is super pregnant, and, like, she had to fly out there. Like, his family, it was, like, this whole thing. But, like, looking back, like, we were like, wow, like, that sucked. But we all got along, and it, it wound up working out for itself. But, I mean, it was just, I mean, it was ten, unreal, man. Ten years from now, when you look back, that's something that you'll never forget, at least. I know it's frustrating, and I spoke about it. All, all of the media members spoke about it till we were blue in the face. And we, we yeah. raised awareness about it as much as we could. But, you know, there's nothing that anybody can do. And, you know. Yeah, the, the money is there, you know. Exactly. So let, let's talk a little bit about this. I mean, you're working over at ESPN. What exactly are you doing over there? I'm doing a lot of different things. Um, lately, I've, I've been doing more time at, um, at Amazon because they just started launching a, a studio in New York. And they needed some engineering help. Uh, I also sometimes run camera. Uh, but for ESPN, like, I was doing a lot of their, like, engineering work. But then, like I said, a lot of the hosts didn't know anything about MMA. And since they started doing MMA, like, before the show, they what is this? What is that? And some of the people there knew boxing, and they were using boxing terminology. So I would, like, be like, no, I don't use that word. Use this word, because that word is an MMA word. That word's a boxing thing. And uh, so I started giving, like, little tips and uh, tricks of the trade uh, to them. Well, you and know then, how uh, brutal MMA fans are like if you say yeah, one wrong you guys thing, are savage people yeah exactly that, i mean mma fans are the best fans like they're diehard like i mean they're down to brawl like if they like a fighter like they're down to brawl like you never see in baseball like people like flying 
from other countries to see their fighter or, you know what I mean? Like just like going to all these events and stuff like that and like following their personal lives. Like I can tell you some crazy things about fighters, personal lives, just because like you're just so, you feel like emotionally connected more to a fighter. And you also learn a lot about other, uh, you know, customs and, and other uh, religions and, and, and people yeah. all around the world unite. I think that's really special mm-hmm. about mixed martial arts. And that's yeah. exactly what I was saying about them coming over to ESPN. There's so much that people can open their eyes up to and be like, oh, my God, this is actually a really like to me. I grew up playing football, baseball, basketball, soccer. And once I found mixed martial arts, once I once I saw UFC, I was like, this is the best sport on planet Earth. Yeah, it's 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 like an Iron Man competition where you can I always thought it was cool how you have the power to kill someone but you don't. You know, I, I was like this sport is like brutal but like amazing and beautiful in, in the same respect. Like we're all made out of the same thing. We all have skin, we all have bones, we all have muscles. Exactly. But what you can get your body to do and how you can train your body. Like I've been to the performance institute that it's like a lab, a lab for human beings. Like, it's absolutely insane, like, what they're able to accomplishing over there. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's at this point where, like, like you know, Habib won't fight during Ramadan. Mm. You know, that's, people are like, well, what's Ramadan? And then it forces people to look it up and learn about that custom. And, you know what I mean? Then you have the people from Africa, you know, Usman, he just came out, he just came out, and he, dem- I don't want to say demolished Woodley, but... You've got these guys coming up from Africa. Now, I wouldn't put it past them to start doing cards out in Africa. You know, you're uniting the world in a time where we need it, where we're so divided. And, and a lot of people see. realize that, like, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, what religion you are, what color skin you are. We all take a punch as, as good as the other. Guy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're all the same. We really are all mm-hmm. the same. And it's about who you are on the inside as an individual and what you can exactly. learn and how far you can push yourself. It doesn't matter what color skin. Like, it has nothing to do with any of that. You're like, you learn a lot about humanity exactly. with the sport. Exactly. It's actually- and, and that's the thing. Like, you start making these friends in these communities. The MMA community started out small and it was very tight-knit. And then now that it's growing, I've met some absolutely amazing individuals fan base wise through the MMA community. And I have friends now all over the country – I, I could go train up in, you know, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Chicago, Oklahoma, like all these different places, California, you know, New Mexico, Arizona, all these places. I, I didn't know anybody before MMA. I, I, I didn't know that. And I'm making all of these new friendships, relationships. Like I see how these people are doing, how, you know, they have a baby coming and this, that. It's amazing. It, you- it's it's a, I can't even put it into words just how good it feels, like how this community is. You don't see that camaraderie with baseball or football. This is you know, also it, why ESPN is so special because it's going to open up so many eyes to people that have, you know, viewed our sport as huge, barbaric. You know what I mean? And it's the complete opposite. It's the complete are you opposite. have people who are tuning in. You were just watching Sports Center. Sports Center now is going to start putting on more and more MMA stuff and stuff like that. And people, your average listener, if you're a fight fan, you're a fight fan. You don't need the ESPN to tell you that. But then you've got these people like, what is this sport? Like, my mother now watches the UFC because she saw it on ESPN one night after, like, a baseball game. You know? And and it's at this point where you're gaining a more um, diverse fan base. And now, you know, you have more and more cards coming. Before it was, like, once a month. Now it's, like, once a week. Which is... You know, the UFC alone and, and all these people up and coming, they're putting in this work and ESPN is showcasing the art. People leave you know, ESPN amazing. on idle. Like you can you can go to any one of your uncle's house, any one of your buddy's uncle's house, and ESPN is most likely on the screen. You can go to any bar. ESPN is on the screen. It's going to reach so many yeah. people. And one thing yeah. I really am happy about with ESPN is them signing on Ariel Hawani. Uh, you know, I love Ariel. I love him. I love his team. I love his producer, Brittany. They are, when I tell you people who are passionate about what they do, they're, they don't get, you don't get better than Ariel Hawani. He is the most humble, down to earth, like individual. I mean, I've been out watching fights with him and stuff like that. And every person who wants to take a picture, no matter what, he'll take a picture with that fan. He'll chit chat. I, I, it's just, 
Oh, he is literally a blessing. And and I know that there's been friction between Ariel and Dana and the UFC and everything else like that. But you know what? I think for the common good, everybody's kind of gotten along and, and been working together, you know, and it's just, he's, he's just stellar. I mean, the way he, he doesn't fight and uh, he's a very good, like, analyst when it comes to that. He puts it in a way where people on the outside can actually relate to. He kind of bridges the gap because he understands the fighter mentality, but he also understands the publicity and the public's view. And I, I, I can't commend that man enough. Like, he's really helping this sport, like, up. Uh, I'm so yeah. happy. Like e- even I want to end. On, I want to end on this before we talk a little bit about yourself. Before we end the interview, like right before I shut my TV off on Sports Center, was they they were airing an interview or not an interview, a commercial of Conor McGregor and and proper whiskey. And you know, then then you tune into a a UFC card and you see Stephen A. Smith. It just feels surreal. It feels like we put so many Stephen years a. Smith into this. Is a man. And it's yeah, and, becoming and- real. It's happening. Yeah. We did it. We, as a fan base, we took a sport that didn't exist. It literally started, the UFC started in Boston with Dana White having fights out of a closet in a hotel. That's how it started. It was like an underground fight ring. And now we're everywhere. We're in every country. Every country. You now, know what I mean? Somebody in one country ha- has something to say about the UFC, even if it's just one person. It's worldwide. I want to ask you, at the beginning of this interview, you said that, you know, you train jujitsu and stuff. Do you do competitions? What are you into? Uh, actually, I have a fight coming up March 29th in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I do jujitsu tournaments. I won Naga North American back in November. I did compete in Worlds in December, just in uh, Nogi. Um, I lost to the girl. I had her beat on points, but I lost to the girl by submission. Um who eventually went on to win the whole division. But, uh, yeah, I love to compete. I'm always competing or training for some type of event because I feel like you can only learn so much in the classroom. you got to test your skills against strangers. So, um, you know, I'm always pushing myself. But, yeah, my next, I have a fight coming up, like I said, in like three weeks. And you so. actually, uh, it seems like you're really into social media, which is a huge thing nowadays, and, and mental health awareness. I want to talk to you about really quick. Nowadays with social media, you see a lot of people getting bullied. You see, you know, I, I can't even I imagine. Bullied. Everyone, I get bullied. world champions get bullied. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Like, uh, like, it's crazy. If, I, if you go through my inbox on Instagram, I'll have people telling me to kill myself, people telling me, like, really weird sexual things, and then I'll have somebody saying, you changed my life, like, thank you for that, yeah. you know? It's absolutely insane, like, the way, like, that, that social media works. And I can see that internet bullying is becoming a real thing. Uh, trolling, it's real. Um, I used to do it. I, sometimes I do it. I only do it really against Dylan Dennis because, <laughs> because it's, on, it's, Dylan it, it's a thing that <laughs> everyone does. I mean, you know what I mean? It's a thing that everybody does, but like, I'm not vicious about it, but you see some people really, really get down and dirty with other people and people who don't have that mental toughness. I could see it breaking them as a person. And that's why we have like such high suicide rates these days. And oh my God. Why yeah. there's so many people who are just depressed day in and day out. Imagine being 12. Do. Like, remember when that's- we were in middle school and high school? Imagine going home and then, you know, logging onto your Facebook and then seeing the one kid that was making fun of you, but yet 50 kids from your school like that. That means it's like a, they're ganging up on you. It, yeah, it's awful. it's awful. And and that's why, like, I feel like, you know, bullying and harassment it needs to be stopped. And that's why my my fight's actually a charity fight, and I'm fighting for Warriors of Purpose. And it is a mental health charity where they put on seminars. And I'm, we're trying to get one going for the New York, New Jersey area. If you guys ever want a mental health seminar, hit me up. I'll give you guys the contact information, like any of the viewers, listeners, whatever. If you just need somebody to talk to, hit me up, you know. Um and they're just spreading awareness. Like life sucks for all of us at this like equally. It might be different, but at the same time, life is beautiful for everyone. And they do a really good job of bringing the awareness where we are human. We are somebody, someone. And you know, people forget that. People forget that other people have feelings and they just put others down just to feel good about themselves. 
And uh, I'm like the first person, if I see somebody getting bullied out in the street, like, and it, it's happened. I've actually confronted, like, grown-ass men, like, six foot plus tall men. And, and, and I have a mouth on I me. Mean, I'm from New Jersey. You know, I don't mess around. <laughs> and uh, I've confronted them. And they're like, what are you going to do about it? I was like, oh, I could, I could bully the bully. Like, that's, I don't care about that, you know. Um, but uh, I feel like we need a world where there's less victims. And um, that's why I, I suffered from depression for a really long time when I was sick. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a case that's, like, really close to my heart, you know. And I think that if one person does something small to change somebody else's life, it could become a chain reaction. And, um, you know, we all really need to start talking about it. It affects everyone, but everybody's afraid to talk about it because they don't want to be ostracized or, oh, you're weak, you're this, you're that. No. Listen, I'm tough. I'm strong, you know what I mean? I'm not ugly, I'm in shape, and I suffer from depression sometimes, we all do. I'm not worried if I'm gonna lose followers to this, fine, unfollow me, I don't care. I, I'm not worried if I'm not gonna get a job because I'm talking about mental health. If you don't wanna hire me, or make me the face of your organization because I talked about me being depressed, I don't need you, I, don't, I, I now realize that you are who you keep around you, and I don't need people like that in my life. And I want the- others to feel that way. That's the beauty of mixed martial arts. Like a a lot of us, everyone, whether they diagnose you with it or not, we're all going to have good days. We're all going to have bad days. But the one thing about sports that's always existed, one thing why sports has always been successful is because it gives us that release, that escape where you, you watch a card like UFC 235 and you're at the edge of your seat. And it's those moments where you feel alive. Even the moment when you were in uh, Vegas and they uprooted you to go to LA. At the end of the day, when you look back at that, it's a good memory. It's something that you'll never yeah. forget. And it made you feel alive. And that's why there's so many people out there that love mixed martial arts, that love sports. And this is why I'm so happy to you know be a part of uh, the sport being a part of ESPN opened up more people's eyes to this because this has saved so many people's lives, whether they just it watch it or become a part of it. it. It's helpful. Exactly. And you get part of that community and you get that camaraderie. You know, I, I, it's just, it's it's amazing what mixed, mixed martial arts, martial arts in general saved my life. So, you know, it believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. My coaches believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. And I, could never repay them for that. And I, and I can only imagine being a part of the Gracie Jiu Jitsu gym. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, the, the, the way that they build your, you know, your inner strength and just like the things that they say are just so poetic and it's gone down yeah. to mixed martial arts history as it's just, it's beautiful is what it is. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And I gotta say the Henzo Gracie, the Ricardo Almeida uh, lineage, it's just, it's unreal. You know, like they just have, they have seen some stuff, you know, they really have. And, um, you know, these aren't just, you know, your weak guys, you know, they're not like monsters. They're not like eight feet tall and like 700 pounds. They're like, they're average size males and, and they can literally destroy anyone. And they know that, but they choose not to. And there are some of the Ricardo, Tenzo, John, the most humble individuals you'll ever meet. And you want to just be like them when you're around them you're like i want to be like that i want to have that inner peace that they do i want to give back to the community i want to do i I want to do what they do and you know it works out like you now have a group of people who just want to be good people you know there's a lot of people that get to you know you know that you graduate high school like for me when i graduated high well before high school like i would look up to Derek jeter or, you know, you, you yeah. have your idols, but when you get out, you're, you're kind of lost with, you know, looking up for an inspiration or role model. And I think a lot of people okay. find that in mixed martial arts. Let's end on a really good note here. I got to ask you, I was looking through your Instagram and you made something that looked absolutely de- delicious. And I don't care what people have to say about it, whether they want to say it, it, it's girly. If I think I, I, I like it, the unicorn martini, how do I make this? I need to drink it. Okay, um, you need to get cotton candy, and you got to get icing and sprinkles um, to decorate it with, but um, it is vanilla vodka, um, it is some cotton candy, it is a little bit of pineapple, and I threw a, a splash of strawberry puree in it. Sounds so, so and good. You Maybe... layer it. I'll send you the recipe. It's, it's amazing. I'm probably going to make, like, all summer long, like, that's what I drink, unicorn drinks, so... 
Maybe you can send me that recipe and I could put it down below in the description with a little picture if people want to make it because, you know. Yeah, it's amazing. When you have a fight night, it's always good to have, like, a little drink. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. just kind of on wine. Name, name one person who's going to fight a fighter because they're drinking a unicorn drink. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, really quick, before we let you go, I saw that you have an, uh, a, a giveaway going on, or at least you're promoting a giveaway going on for an iPhone yes. X. How do, how do people yes. win this? All right. So, the iPhone X, it's through Warriors of Purpose. You have to go to... The Warriors of Purpose uh, Instagram page. You need to like everyone on their page. They don't really have a lot. Take like 10 seconds. And you got to tag three friends. You're entered to win. This time next week, we're going to be announcing the winner. And I promise you the iPhone exists. And I promise you it's going to be given away on Instagram Live. And it should, I mean, come on. It's so easy. It's a, it's a freaking iPhone. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, if you can get more information on that if you follow me at uh, Ashley Lauren Rollo on Instagram. That's A H H L E Y L A U R E N R O L L O, um, and then that way you can get all the information on there. But yes, yeah, we are giving away that. I'm also selling T-shirts for my fight tonight's the last night. If any of y'all want to buy any, um, it's from Bonfire Bonfire dot com backslash Team Hype and Fearless, and all money goes towards Warriors of Purpose. So yeah. And right now, yeah. the time that we're recording this, guys, it's March 5th. When are they announcing the winner for people listening? Maybe it's a, a day March, or two later. Um, March 13th is going to be the day that they announce it. Um, it's going to be 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Pacific. Ashley, I want to thank you so much for joining me here on Pure Evil. No comment. I'm happy to come on. Let me know if you ever want to do this again, man. Yeah, I, I'm sure I'll see you soon at one of the events or... Uh, I'm sure we'll link up at, at some point. Before we let go, what we like to do is if you have any sponsors, shout outs, anything at all, uh, you know, first off, th th shout out to Iron Shin Muay Thai for hooking this interview up. If you Dude, have any. Iron, amazing, amazing group. So, yeah, shout out to them. Uh, shout out to NJ Nutrition. They're my supplement company. I actually, you know, just bought stuff from them today. They're amazing, keeping me in fight shape. Thrive uh, Wellness. We got the best cryo in the, in the area. They are one of two facilities with a full body box cryo. Amazing. Um, All Tech Gates. Shout out to you, Rob, for changing my life. Um, Cash Championship. Gary Tonin's company. Pretty dope. And uh, yeah, you know, ESPN, Amazon folks, what's up? See y'all this weekend. So, Ashley, yeah. thank you so much. And really cool. No problem. Your, your, your fight, if people are in the area, where can they go get tickets or watch you? If they're in it? Atlanta, hit me up. Um, it's at Monday Night Brewing. It's on Friday, March 29th. Doors open, I believe, at 6 or maybe 7. Not 100% sure. I'll obviously be there sooner. But, yeah, come by, say what's up. Watch me beat somebody up. Watch me get beaten up. Either way, it's going to be a good time. I'll put on a good show for you guys. So, you know, check it out. Ashley Lauren Rolo, thank you so much. Have a great night. I'll no let problem. you go now. And uh, we wish you, you best of luck in the tournament. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. There you guys go. Ashley Lauren Rolo. Join us here for the first time on Pure Evil MMA. What a treat that was. Hearing from someone at ESPN. And you know what, guys? I was trained by ESPN. I went to Community School of Broadcasting where you Ooh. had the original creators the original team and guys that work there right now in all different areas train me. So it's so cool to hear from somebody that also works there and is part of the mixed martial arts scene that's seeing and has their eyes open to, you know, what's going on. It means so much. It's such an exciting time. I remember hearing stories when I was a little kid about, and I say this a lot on the podcast, 1961, Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, chasing that home one record. And, you know, the media following up on that. It feels like right now, that is the era that we're in with mixed martial arts. Things are just so exciting. You don't know what next week is going to bring. And the schedule is insane. If you look at, first off, every week, this month, there's going to be a card. There are so many good uh, uh, matchups coming up. I can't wait. And you guys can find that all. Here at Pure Evil MMA. We're going to be breaking down, making predictions, pureevilmma.com. We got interviews every week. I, this is my fourth interview today. We interviewed uh, Meiji Shasan 
earlier today from UFC 235. Check that out down below here in the playlist. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed UFC 235. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this interview. Leave a comment down below if there's anyone else you guys would like to have on the show. Request to come on the show. That, that, that about does it, guys. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, Periscope, Player FM. Wherever you're tuning in right now, it means the world to me. And uh, I, I love these interviews where you can just kind of unwind and just remember what's going on right now in the scene. Why you should be excited to be an MMA fan, to be a new MMA fan, or if you're an old MMA fan or, or new MMA fan, just spread the word to other sports fans because this is the best sport on planet Earth. And with that being said, guys, you know what it is. I'm Evil Eddie from Pure Evil MMA. Without evil, there's no purity. White knuckles to the end. Behave yourselves.